Hey folks, Anthony Special here with Big Energy Profits. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I just want to take a moment and really break down this methodology that I call passive trading for massive income. Uh, and I want to really focus in and hone in on the ability to make a very rewarding income, getting great re uh, return on your investment, while really capitalizing on not spending too much of your time. Now, when we think passive income, Typically, we think of real estate holdings or annuities or financial products of that nature. I want to run through a typical real estate holding, um, you know, leveraging the same amount of money that you would need to do that deal as you would need to put in a trading account to simulate what I traded and did this past year. So this way you get a real feel uh, kind of for what your money is doing for you. Now, listen, nothing against real estate holdings. I have them myself. I totally believe in diversifying. Um, but with that being said, having a balance of, of multiple buckets bringing you different sources of income, uh, you will find that some will be higher rewarding. And I'm not saying to be not diversified, but I want you to see where your money can be working for you more efficiently. So let's take a look at a quick real estate deal and just break this down. So here in this example, I'm going to use some real basic numbers. This is middle America. This is nothing fancy. This is not a Manhattan high rise or a San Diego, you know, La Jolla type home. This is, you know, your middle America home. This is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, single family home uh, that we would buy with a purchase price, closing cost and improvements to get ready to be rented for about $200,000. Now, that's a, a large investment. Most of us don't have 200000 but to get into this deal with the down payment and the closing costs and the, the out-of-pocket capital, it would probably cost us about $60,000 before the house was closed on and ready to get a tenant in it. Because, I mean, that's the objective. The objective here is to create passive income. And by collecting rent, that becomes passive income. So let's say we do we buy this house, we close on it, we dial it all up, we do the improvements, um, you know, we run through all the expenses because there's always expenses incurred, and then we get to rent this beautiful home that we have, our investment, for two thousand dollars a month. That sounds like a fair number for a three bed, two and a half single family, uh, two and a half bath single family home, middle America. Now we have to talk about the expenses that come with the two thousand dollar a month income. We have a debt service. Uh, you know, with a mortgage, there's 600 bucks a month. We have property taxes, there's 500 bucks a month. We have insurance, we have tenants, so we have to have insurance. We have to have homeowner's insurance and tenant insurance for any damages. There's another 125 a month. We got to be concerned about water and sewer because we don't need the municipality putting a lien on our property. Let's figure for round number $75 a month. Now we got to put a few bucks aside every month to cover the cost of maintenance and repairs because when we own real estate, there's always reinvestment. Things break, it's just what happens. So let's figure another 300 bucks a month we gotta put on the side that we can't look at as cash flow as a return on our investment. So out of that $2,000 a month that we collected in rent, we really only ended up with about 400 bucks cash flow. Now 400 bucks a month times 12 months, that's if we get paid. Uh, that leaves us with about a $4,800 a year um, return on investment. <clears throat> now, if we look at the $60,000 we took out of our pocket to collect that $4,800 a year, we're basically getting an 8% return on investment. Now, listen, is 8% terrible? No, 8% is actually pretty good. The downside to this 8% is a few things. If we went through what we just went through with this mortgage and rent forbearance that the government had put a halt on things, you didn't get paid any rent. Maybe you didn't pay your mortgage, but your property taxes are still due, your insurance is still due, your water and sewer is still due, the house still needs to be maintained and repaired. Um, so you probably went backwards. <clears throat> you have to factor in time of vacancy, meaning in between tenants, there's going to be a gap in time where there's going to be a vacancy in your rental property. That has to be factored into your carrying costs. Now, you're going to come into repairs, repairs from just normal wear and tear. You're going to come into repairs that were inflicted by your tenant that is not going to be covered by your security deposit that you took from them when they moved in. 
So that 8%, while it sounds great, probably isn't 8% over the entire life of you owning this property as you're waiting to get a return on your investment. So I just want to put that in perspective. Like I said, I have real estate holdings. I believe in being diversified. But I could use the same $60,000 in a different manner and not and, and eliminate a lot of those issues. Now listen, there's always risk. Like there's risk involved in real estate. There's risk involved in the market. But let's talk about how we can do that. So we could, with that same $60,000, used it over and over again, never really just used our capital, like our down payment, to take our trades. And we could have taken 13 trades during the calendar year of 2020, utilizing that same 60000 over and over and over again. And with those 13 trades, combined with winners and losers, we could have returned ourselves uh, over $400,000. Now that is exciting. I didn't have a tenant calling me at three o'clock in the morning because the toilet was running. I didn't have to worry about them not paying any of the bills. I didn't have to worry about taking them to court. I didn't have to worry about forbearance. I took 13 trades, a little more than one trade per month, and I generated that type of income. So I'm looking at $4,800 of free cash flow from my rental property or $400,000 of cash flow from my trading account. Now let's put these side by side and just take a look and see what they look like. So let's go back to the rental property real quick. Out of pocket investment to get into the rental property. We're gonna lay out about $60,000 out of our pocket. Now, that gets us a nice middle America, three bed, two and a half bath, single family, one story home, and we're gonna collect 2,000 a month rent. We're gonna pay a debt service of about 600 bucks a month with principal uh, interest and mortgage insurance. We're gonna pay taxes. We're gonna to have to pay property taxes. We're gonna to have to pay insurance. We're gonna to have to cover water and sewer so we, the municipality doesn't put a lien on our home. And we're gonna to have to compensate for maintenance and repairs. Now with all that said, we're left with about $400 a month cash flow or about 100 bucks a week. Listen, this is 8% a year is not terrible, but there's a lot of variables that go into this. There's a lot of risk. Just like we always talk about risk in the market, there's also risk in the real estate business. So if you're one that's looking for passive income, meaning you want to be able to pour your money onto something and it return you money, that's what we're here to talk about today. Now, with this 8% return on investment here in your single-family home rental property that, that you are now holding debt on your balance sheet for and running risk, that's what you got on your 60 grand. You got 4800 bucks, less than $5,000. Now, that $5,000 after your expenses is going to be taxed as regular income, meaning whatever your tax bracket is, you are going to pay income tax at that rate on that money. Now let's flip to the other side of the coin here. Let's take that same $60,000 and let's put it into a futures trading account. Let's take 13 trades on average about one trade a month. That's not too time intensive. Okay. You'll spend more time tending to your rental property than you will tending to your trading account. Your average return on your trades, combined with wins and losses, will be about $33,276.92 for a net annual income of $432,600. Now that same 60,000 we started with, we have a 721% return on our money. So do we want 720% return? on actual hard cash that we are going to then be taxed because we are trading futures, commodity futures in the United States on a different fashion than we would be on our regular income. Now, 60% of that $432,600 is going to be taxed as what's considered long-term capital gains. And the other 40% will then be taxed 
as what's called short-term capital gains or ordinary income, contingent on the tax bracket in which you are in. Now guys, same 60 grand invested, 721% return on my money in the market, or 8% return, less some variables on a piece of real estate. The question becomes, where is that $60,000 serving you better? Where does that $60,000 make you truly wealthy? And does it truly give you that form of massive passive income that's not requiring an abundance of your time? The stock market will never call you at 3 o'clock in the morning because the toilet's running. I promise. I've been doing this for a long time. It, they won't. Guys, you have to say... What makes more sense? If I spent a couple hours, literally a couple hours a month, checking the market, following Anthony's trades, and I get that type of return on my money, compared to parking my money in a single family uh, rental property, where am I, where, we can't even compare apples to apples here at 721% return versus 8%. And we know that 8% has variables to it. We know there can be vacancies. We know there can be tenant forbearance that they didn't pay the rent because they because the government told them they didn't have to. Well, guess what? When I take a winning trade in the market, the money's in my account instantaneously. I don't have to call my trading platform and negotiate for it. I don't have to ask them to sign a contract. I don't have to get attorney and attorneys involved. I don't have to go to court. And I don't ever have to evict anybody in the market. So I ask you, if this is something that you see fit as a portion of your way moving forward, I ask you if $60,000 with a 721% return is more interesting than $60,000 with a variable 8% return. If that interests you, I encourage you and I invite you to watch my training webinar. It'll take you about 45 minutes. It's well worth your time. You cannot get this type of return buying rental properties. You would have to be so leveraged that you would never be able to do it. It's just not feasible. Not feasible with a $60,000 account. Now listen, if you can't afford a $60,000 trading account or a $60,000 down payment on a single family home, that's okay. Knock a zero off. What if you started trading and following the trades that I'm taking personally with just $6,000 trading just one contract and you were able to make yourself $43,260? Just take a zero off the end. That's all the difference is. It's just a zero. It's still the same percentage of return. With $6,000, you could never entertain the idea of investing in a small single-family rental home. That's out, of your, that's out of your league. But it's not when it comes to trading futures. Now, if $6,000 is still too much for you, that's okay. The markets offer what we call micro-contracts, meaning portions of a contract. For even less than that, you can get involved. If you say, Anthony, listen, I'm not a futures trader. It's okay. You can follow along with ETFs if you prefer to trade ETFs. If you say, I don't do ETFs, that's okay. I'm an options guy. Beautiful. Every trade I take, I give the option to follow it by buying a call or a put option. I give you the ticker. I give you the information. I tell you when to buy it, where to buy it, how to buy it, where to sell it, the whole nine yards. It's that simple. But if you want to mimic exactly what I'm doing, here it is. 60000 in a futures trading account or 60000 invested on a down payment into a single family home to try to get 8% or to, or to see a return, an actual return of 721%. Listen, there's risk in both deals. All day long, I will risk... I prefer to take the risk on the reward of 721% over take the risk on the reward of 8%. And I think anybody who has 
any financial wherewithal would agree with that. So guys, I don't want to keep you too much longer, but I encourage you, take a moment, check out my training webinar. It will take you a little bit of time to go through it. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of content. And the reason it's there is because I want you to know what you're getting into. I want you to know that this is what the real potential is. Will this year be as good as last year? I hope it's better. I do. I truly do. My numbers from 2019 to 2020 went up significantly in winning in wins. So hopefully we're going to see the same in 2021. We are positioned to do that. And if you would like to be positioned to ride the coattails of somebody who's doing it and been doing it for a long time, I invite you to join the Big Energy Profits family. Guys, I hope you have a great day, a fantastic day, a profitable day. God bless you all, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Take care.